Good morning, Mr. Dupont. How are you feeling? I'm doing great. How are you, Ben? Doing pretty good. Now, if I'm allowed to ask, what part of Canada did you grow up in? I grew up in Montreal, nice. a little town in the East End called St. Michel. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I went to Canada this past summer for, for vacation, went to Vancouver. Great. Yeah, that, that's where I'm at right now, actually. I'm in Vancouver. Are you shooting a movie at the moment or? No, not right now. Uh, just in the process, I had some pitch meetings. I I played in a hockey tournament this weekend, actually, nice. um, which was fun. I haven't done that in over 10 years. So that was uh, it was a good time. Didn't know you played hockey. What what do you enjoy most? Do you enjoy hockey or do you enjoy acting? Oh, well, acting. Acting is my career. I mean, I love playing hockey. It's it's I can do both. So why not do both? Right. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I'm both illustrator and podcaster. There and you go. Photo editor. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. And uh, you you were in you were in a stars television show called mm. Power. Uh, I just discovered that this morning. Now, what's the story? What's what's that story about? Well, Power is a series uh, basically about these two. Uh, quote unquote brothers not really brothers but they are in the sense of um that they work together and they're two drug dealers and um it's a story of their lives and how they they deal with uh the growing industry of, of selling drugs and where the money and the success is taking them and one of them wants to get out of it and become like do more important things in life than just drug dealer and the other one's like we're drug dealers this is what we do and then i come in and try to foil their plans nice and are you one of the main characters or are you the supporting character? Um, I'm a supporting character, but I became a series regular the last season. So I came in season four yeah. and uh, my character's name was Jason Michich and he's uh, the Serbian drug lord. And he comes in to do some deals with the guys and then ends up eventually as the series goes on, take, takes over and they end up working for him. Nice. And now you were in, you were, you also played a character in, Deadpool 2. You were yes. the security guard in Deadpool 2. Now, is that your first time getting to work on a Marvel production or have you worked on a Marvel production before? Wow. No, I mean, I, I've done a few X-Men. Um, my earlier career, I was uh, was a stuntman as well. So um, I did work on X-Men, uh, which I did Wolverine. I did uh, X-Men, Days of Future Past. What else did I do? Uh, I did a few other ones. Um, just stunt, mostly stunt work and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I a couple lines here and there and then do some fight scenes with Hugh Jackman. And so I can't complain. <laughs> it was fun. It was great. And uh, what was your experience getting to work with both Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds? You know what? what's amazing is these guys are true professionals and very nice, cordial, but they know what they want. They know what they, you know, what to get out of a scene and um, just nice people ready to work. So yeah, nothing bad to say at all. They're great. Um, Hugh was really, uh, caught me off guard when Hugh said a really nice thing to me uh, when we were getting ready to shoot, to shoot. And he's like, thank you for being on, on, on this movie. And, and uh, I've heard a lot of great things about you. And I'm like, wow, really? I was about to say, thanks for having me. So um yeah, it was humbling, but it was great. Yeah, Hugh's great, and, and Ryan as well. Um, and we're both Canadian, which 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 is uh, a, a cool thing as well. Something you have in common. Yes, exactly. Now, both men are teaming up to be in Deadpool 3. And since now that Marvel is, since that both X-Men and, and the MCU is now coming into a, a multiverse phase, what is your, uh, what what's your thoughts about that? Oh, I, I would I would love to see it. I, I man, those two guys on screen together. I think the chemistry is going to be amazing. You can tell already by their jokes and how they, you know, on Instagram and such. Um, I think they're it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be great. Nice. And kudos to Hugh Jackman. You know, uh, I don't know at what stage or how how. I mean, he's always in great shape. Uh, I remember that doing the X Men. Um, he had been training. He was telling me how his training was going. And he was down, they had it down to the minute uh, as, as to what kind of drinks they would have at the last minute, right before shooting a scene and how much he would lift and get ready because he had to have a shirt off and such. And it was amazing. He was in, in such phenomenal shape. Um, so I'm curious to see what, how they pull this one off. I think it'll be great. Very cool. And speaking of superhero in a, in a red suit who gets bullets and gets scars, but also heals really fast, you were... You were in a film two years ago, a, a Christmas film called Violent Night. And I actually, 
have it right here. Yes. Great movie. Now, what well, was I'm glad it? you liked it. Yeah, it's it was I think it was a bit of a surprise hit. So yeah, I saw it twice. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Very funny. Uh, one of my favorite lines is I'll I'll have to bleep it out because we can't can't cuss <laughs> on pressure podcast. But uh, is when is when you're in the scene, you're telling your your troops. Yeah. Uh, Camaro goes by just boy. He's like, what we do? We. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and what do we do? Yeah, we. F up. Oh, can I say that? There we go. <laughs> it'll, it'll get cut out. Whoops. Don't worry. Hey, you're not the first one to swear on Retro Podcast, but it gets bleeped out. Don't worry. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, you know what? That was an amazing, uh, just uh, the journey to get there and to get this because it was through COVID. And I remember uh, we got pushed a month because everybody on the crew and the cast tested positive for COVID. And then I was still, I was still away. I was on the West coast and then they kept pushing me to come in. So it's kind of a weird thing to come into a city, especially like Winnipeg. And it was, they were going through a record, um, record cold, record snowfall, which you can imagine in Winnipeg was, I think it was, it was negative 30. We were shooting negative 28 Celsius. And a lot of our, and we were on snowmobiles. We were doing all kinds of stuff. So it was, it was really cold, but we sort of all bonded, you know, um, we couldn't really go out much because the city was pretty much shut down. And then halfway through it opened up a little bit. So we were able to go watch some of the UFC fights or, or went to some of the hockey games, the, the Winnipeg Jets. So it was a great time the way we ended up bonding and because we were really a tight knit community at that point. Mm -hmm. Very, it's very, very cool. And now between both COVID and now that the pandemic is over, like what's the difference with, with filming? Like how, how are they shooting movies? How are they keeping everyone safe, making sure no one gets sick? How, how's it handled these days? Well, I think right now it's, it's gone back to sort of as normal as it can be. Um, the sets I've been on, the last set I was on, we didn't have to wear masks or anything. And um, obviously if we, if we felt sick, they would, tell us to not you know they would ask us questions how we feeling this morning and that but nothing compared to what, what it was like shooting during covid with the masks and the testing you know three times a week it was uh it was getting to be uh it was a it was a big ordeal because we'd have to go you'd have to drive into the studio get tested go back home and wait for the call saying you're okay um and i ended up losing a show because i tested positive uh for covid my first time this was about two years ago and I felt fine, but I tested positive. And literally the moment I tested positive, I started to feel like hell. It was terrible. I can and, and then they had to recast because um, it was the last five days of shooting and they couldn't push, they couldn't push 10 days. I think they had to wait at that point, they had to wait 10 days. So they had to recast, which was a bit of a bummer, but um, yeah, really sorry about that. It happens. Uh, not the first one that it happened to. Uh. My uh, grandparents, they're both 90 and they caught COVID last year for the, for the first time. Uh, they're, they're doing good. They're, they're safe, oh, good. They're healthy. But when we were on the, uh, the Vancouver cruise, it went from Vancouver to Alaska. When we were on the right. cruise, it was a two week cruise and they caught COVID the second week, both them and my mother. But they, they got over it quickly. They were safe to go home, but it was really, really boring because all they did was stay in the cabin and eat. Stay in the cabin. Service. I know. Oh, I was quarantined upstairs at our place. It was pretty funny. They would <laughs> they'd leave me food at the bottom of the stairs. I'd have to go down and get my food. <laughs> oh boy! Well, we made it. We made it through. There we you made go. it through. Getting yeah. sick is not fun. No, no. Yeah, I was surprised at how I remember there was like I think it was the third or fourth day. I thought my lungs I'm like okay, I might have to go into the hospital. It just doesn't feel good. And then it was then it went away. So. <laughs> And uh, what was the biggest inspiration that made you want to become an actor or stuntman or hockey, go on the hockey? Um, you know, uh, for me, I, I think it was really Mel Gibson and Mad Max, the, the, the movie Mad Max. And my brother and I used to watch these movies, uh, all these B movies, you know, Escape from New York back in the day, those types of movies. And Mad Max, for whatever reason, really resonated with me, that post-apocalyptic world. And it was something I'm like, oh my God, I would love, to, I'd do anything to be in this kind of a, I just felt like I was part of it and I could do this. And, uh, and then eventually I did and, and got into it and sort of on the way after my, my uh, football career was over, I realized that, um, okay, I've got to do something else. And I've always, I always wanted to be an actor, but I didn't know how to go about doing it. And then I started just asking questions and, and that's how I got involved.
Nice. Went to the union office. I went to the union office and I asked, I said, I want to be an actor. And they laughed at me. I said, no, I'm serious. I want to, I had done a couple commercials um, through sports and through when I was at Southern Illinois university and such. So I'd done a few things, but uh, I really got the bug. Um, and then, then I just pursued it and just stuck with it. <laughs> and football, you played football mostly through college or after college? Yeah, I played at Southern Illinois University. And then uh, I was in Saskatchewan. Uh, I played uh, in the CFL for a little while. A short cup of coffee there. Um, and then I was in the World League for a little bit in Birmingham. And then the World League folded. And then uh, I went back to hockey, played a little bit of hockey in the East Coast Hockey League. And then my sports career was done. <laughs> a few too many surgeries and, and injuries. I think it was it was time to let it go. Understood. And uh, for people that want to go into acting or sports, what is the best advice you would pass on to them? Oh, um, may I hope it's a passion. Uh, and the reason I say that is there's so much rejection as an actor. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, if you're fortunate and you do well with auditioning and such, it, it'll be, you'll have maybe one out of 10, one out of 20. And I don't think a lot of actors, when they start out, are prepared for that. They think, okay, here we go. I'm auditioning. I'm going to get a gig. And you, you get, and some people get it like their first audition, they'll get a gig. But it's it's really being, uh, it's got to be passion. And it's got to be something you love to do that you can do on your own as far as if you can't work in film and TV and it's taking too long to get there, do plays, work on plays, do that kind of thing. Uh, work, go to acting class, work on scene study. Um, there's so many things you can do that that can really help enhance your, your career. Thank you. Thank you. And we're, we're coming down to the end of the interview and we have, oh, wow. okay. two, we have two famous questions. Uh, the first one is a question from my mother. She okay. wants to know if, if you had to watch one movie for the rest of your life, it doesn't have to be every day. It could be as many days as you want. What would that movie be? Wow. I have never even thought about that one. That's a question my wife would ask. Um, <laughs> yeah, she always says, if it was your last meal on earth, what would you have? You know, uh, it's, it depends on the day. Um, <laughs> it depends on the day. Oh, man. Um <laughs> okay i'm gonna go with uh i'll say uh the original mad max um good movie yeah the original one i, I would say i i enjoyed the the mad the tom hardy mad max as well but um yeah the original mad max because that's what got me into the industry so probably that nice and uh for the famous question this is a retro show uh what was your favorite retro product growing up in the 80s or 90s <laughs> Well, I remember when video games started coming out and, uh, you know, I, we, he, what was it? A quarter, I think you went to the, to the arcade and you play, you spent a quarter on each machine. And, uh, I remember the first, the first one that really caught my eye and my attention was asteroids. Good Do you remember asteroids? Yeah. Oh, yes. And that's, that's the one. And I mean, there were other ones too, like space invaders and that, but I remember specifically it was those two asteroids and space invaders that I love to play. Space invaders. I was great at it. Space yes. Affairs is a very intense game. Yeah. Yes. As it gets going as faster and faster, you're like, <laughs> whoa. Uh, but yeah, for me, th those were the games. That, and I wasn't great at them, but I enjoyed playing them. They were fun. Uh, we had a guest on here at the beginning of, of the season who collects a lot of arcade console machines. Okay. Uh, he has them in his basement. He turned his basement into an entire 1980s arcade. He was on the show explaining his his passion for collecting. Oh wow, yeah. that would be amazing, actually. He does. Uh, he does music. His name is Till Paris. Uh, he okay, does, he does music. Uh, he's actually uh, going to help me on a project uh, in a couple of months. Uh, he's going to do some music for a project that I'm working on. Oh, fantastic! It's great. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr. Dupont, thank you for taking your time on today's episode, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Ben. Nice to meet you, and uh, have a great week. There you go.